So welcome everyone to the European Society of Biomechanics webinar series. Today we have the great pleasure to host a webinar about how to use the open source software FreeFem to perform finite element modeling in the context of biomedical engineering. But before giving you more details on today's uh, webinar and lecturer, Morsh Taba, I would like to introduce to you two members of the ESB student committee that will take care of the ESB webinar series from now on. So Laura and Gianluca. So after two years, it was time to reassign tasks within the ESB student committee. They were already part of it, but managing other tasks such as social media and activities during the ESB conference. So Gianluca unfortunately could not be here today, but you will meet him uh, later on. While Laura is here, and I would like to let her introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Um, first, again, welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, indeed, my name is Laura. I'm currently a PhD student, a student at Kyle Leuven in Belgium. And until now, indeed, I was managing the Twitter account, so you were following us. Of course, that was me until now. Uh, and I will be uh, another colleague. Um, I am very excited to, to also hold this webinar uh, as my first uh, chairing webinar because he's my dear friend and, and colleague, Mosheva. So I think we can go back to him. Yeah, thank you, Laura. So yes, indeed, let's go back to today's webinar. And it's a great honor for me to introduce to you Moshtaba Bartegari. He's currently a postdoctoral researcher in the group of electrochemical materials and systems at the Eindhoven University of Technology. His research is focused on building mathematical and high performance computational models of electrochemical processes of energy storage systems. He holds a PhD from KU Leuven, during which he worked on computational modeling of tissue engineering processes and biomaterials biodegradation behavior. So Moshtaba is also a big fan of open source, and he's actually contributing to expand open source scientific computing and finite element modeling through his YouTube channel called Tax Riders. And I will later post the link in the chat. And I recommend all of you to follow his YouTube channel. So the presentation will be about 45 minutes, followed by 10, 15 minutes of Q&A session. So either during or after the talk, please type in your questions in the question box so that we can collect them. As a quick reminder, all the webinars are uploaded on the ESB YouTube channel, where you can find many other videos, such as recording of, recordings of the Journal Club sessions or awards presentation and so on. So please subscribe to get to know more the activities going on within the ESB. So I don't want to steal any more time from you, Moshtaba. So the stage is yours. And we are very much looking forward to hearing your talk. Thank you so much. Let me first share my screen. So, yeah. You should be able to see the second monitor, yeah? Like the, okay. We good. see the white screen. Yes, nice. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the introduction, uh, Lara and Kiara. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation. In this uh, webinar, I will have a short overview on uh, finite element modeling work uh, we carried out over the past few years using FreeFem in the field of computational biomedical engineering and also generally on the tool itself. So the outline, uh, outline of the talk will be like, uh, you know, on a couple of headlines. The first one, and it's uh, actually the most important one, is the finite element modeling as a general term, because in the field, especially in biomedical engineering and uh, mechanical engineering, these terms usually used for, you know, simulations in solid mechanics. Uh, and then I will show you that this is actually a method for solving uh, differential equations. And then I will introduce FreeFem as a final element language or tool that we can use to solve partial differential equations. And then I will show you a bunch of examples we had using FreeFem in the field of biomedical engineering. And I will have also a short overview on uh, high performance computing that is quite easy to do in FreeFem. 
So as I said, uh, you know, when we talk about finite element modeling, these are the kind of, uh, you know, usually simulations that people think about. You have a structure, you mesh it, you divide it into elements, and then you perform, uh, you apply some loads, boundary conditions, and then you want to get some, uh, you know, stresses or deformation out of it. And this is actually true, this is still finite element, but it has uh, actually a broader uh, meaning. That was actually, uh, it is when finite element started, but after that, mathematicians saw that, yeah, this is actually a nice idea. We can apply the same principles into like numerical methods. And for that, we can solve equations uh, pretty similar to other uh, numerical approaches. So I would say that finite element is not only for solid mechanics and solid biomechanics, but it is applicable for fluid mechanics, for material science equations, for, for equations that would derive from mass and heat transfer. And generally speaking, anywhere we have equations to solve, and more specifically partial differential equations to solve. So in a few couple of slides, I will show you some examples of equations and then the corresponding like uh, visualization of the results that we solve inside FreeFem and finite element modeling in general. So this is now your Stokes equation with the continuity equation. And when we solve that using uh, finite element modeling, and as I said, this is in FreeFem, we can have like the evolution of the flow field, as you can see here, that bypasses an obstacle, and then kind of, uh, you know, the, the patterns that form uh, behind it. The next example is for material science where we have the corrosion and biodegradation model as a set of differential equations. I will show you more about this, uh, you know, this topic later on. But as you can see, uh, we can have like the diffusion reaction convection equations being modeled. And as a result, when we've solved this equation, we can have uh, like uh, simulations results like this. This shows the release of material and the uh, surface of the implant degraded. The next example is from tissue engineering and cell viability. We put cells inside some uh, you know, containers, some wells to provide oxygen, and then we can model the consumption of oxygen, again, using a diffusion reaction model. This is uh, another example from, again, tissue engineering for tissue growth models. We see cells on a surrounding of uh, some scaffolds and then using a phase field equation, we can describe how they grow. This is a curvature dependent grow. So we have higher growth in regions with higher curvature. I will show you more about this later on. Again, an equation that we solve with finite elements. And this is another one using a different technique called level set where we can really investigate the effects of different uh, like geometrical properties of the scaffolds on the rate of tissue growth. Next example is a coupled problem in multiphysics, like diffusion convection together, depending on the type of diffusion we have, diffusion regime. On the right, we have high diffusion. On the left, low diffusion. This is the partial differential equation. So as you can see, coupled and having like the, the effect of um, convection also in the diffusion equation. So this is the result. And so having the same thing also, you know, with a couple of uh, obstacles, this is written for uh, heat. So for temperature, and it's more or less the same. So as you can see, you know, the finite element is not just for solid mechanics. And very similar to that, we have elements. So finite elements, that's the, the terminology. So the domain is divided into elements and we call them mesh. And then we solve the equations, the partial differential equations, inside this element. So as you can see, this is what you see is usually uh, the, the kind of visualization on the left, but behind the scene is actually what is happening on the right. This is another example that when you see the visualization uh, results of the output of finite element, you should usually see what is depicted on the left, but at the same time, we have the mesh on the right. And as you can see here, for example, we can have also mesh refinement. I will show you more example that you refine the mesh, the size of the elements under regions that are more important for you. This is another example for the cell viability that you can see that the mesh multi-material, we have two regions actually in gray and red. And on the uh, right, it is uh, the visualization. 
So uh, let me quickly show you that actually what I mean here for applying finite element as a numerical method to partial differential equations. So in the first place, there are a bunch of various methods. And here I want to just discuss finite difference because it is uh, quite known, I would say, com commonly used for solving partial differential equations in the field of biomedical engineering or chemical engineering. Uh, and finite element, of course, so it is a topic of the presentation. But there are really much more uh, methods with their own uh, advantages and drawbacks. An example that I want to show you is a reaction diffusion PDE that we have like U as a function of X and T. Now, I don't want to go into the mathematics a lot in this presentation. This, these are a couple of slides just for the reference, but you can also, uh, as Kiara said, you can watch the recordings later and uh, go through these slides uh, more if you, you are interested. So then we have like a diffusion reaction PDE describing the way that U is diffused and then how it reacts with the surroundings. So just model simply using this term here. And then I want to see, uh, you know, how I can solve it. And I, as an example, you know, the, the equation that I showed you for the biodegradation and corrosion is very similar to this. So as you compare these two things, you can see that actually I have omitted this term, which is just a constant. And then this is the reaction term and this is the diffusion. So if we want to solve this using finite difference, I think uh, you know, many of you already know this, that we can uh, divide this space, which is called discretization, into a uh, number of elements. In this case, it's one dimensional. So we have just x and t. And then we discretize the temporal term like this. And then the right-hand side can be discretized according to the you know, adjacent nodes. And with this kind of notation for matrix, uh, for, uh, matrix notation, we can also divide a diffusion like, uh, like uh, a spatial uh, dependent diffusion term and a reaction like this. And this is very, very easy to implement inside any program. This is 1D, but it can be extended to 2D or 3D. So the main advantage here is easy implementation. But the main drawback is that, you know, with finite difference, it can be quite difficult to deal with complex geometries. And this is where actually finite element can show quite uh, some advantage, I would say. So in finite element terminology, this is really important because this is what FreeFem deals with. And in order to use tools like FreeFem or Phoenix that we already had a, a webinar on that, you really need to learn this, uh, you know, the mathematical background that is also very easy to get. So in this case, we call the equation, the partial differential equation we want to solve, a strong form. And then we apply you know, a mathematical technical variation of formulation and final space on that. And then we get a weak form, you know, a, a form that looks like this. You know, I will quickly show you how, to, how it is derived. And this is a term that you need to uh, you know, work with inside tools like FreeFem. So the only prerequisite that uh, you need to know to work with tools like FreeFem is learning how to go from the strong form to the weak form. The way that we do it, you know, I go back again to the, to the equation that I showed you. Here is uh, like um, the reaction diffusion equation. And we divide each term of that by an arbitrary function, V, uh, you know, it, we had some properties, you know, I don't want to go to the details, but I just want to show you how simple it is. And then we apply, uh, you know, we integrate all the terms according on the whole mesh that we have, like on the uh, entire mesh, computational mesh. And then we divide the, the terms, the second term can be divided, integral by parts, and then here we can apply boundary conditions, this is the boundary of the node. Uh, boundary of the, uh, of the domain, sorry. And in a lot of cases, it can be eliminated based on some, uh, you know, properties of U and V. And in the end, we get something like this. And uh, actually, the temporal term is also uh, discretized using finite difference. So in the end, the weak form is a combination of finite elements and finite difference. So this is really like the way that you can uh, derive the weak form. And then the next step is to get this, uh, the weak form, into a form that A, uh, like AU equals B or AX equals B, linear system of equations. And this is actually what FreeFem does for us. 
So uh, Briefm can integrate the weak form that I showed you on the entire domain. So it means that you just need to derive the mathematical equation, convert it to weak form, and then Freefem can convert it like this kind of weak formulation into a code and then solve that on any shape, on any geometry, on any mesh for us. So this is really like the essential um, concept to grasp that uh, this is a little bit different from other tools like console, ANSYS, or ABAC when, uh, where you apply uh, like boundary conditions on geometry and you usually do not care about models behind a scene. Here is the advantage, you know, that you can deal with any type of equation. That's a lot of cases you derive yourself from the biology or chemistry or physics behind the scene, and then you can solve it on any uh, mesh, let's say. So as you compare the big formulation, the way that it is implemented inside FreeFam, you can see that it's very, very similar to the mathematical notation. This is also the same for Phoenix or other tools that work on the same principle. So, uh, you know, from uh, the tool, then uh, from the same uh, techniques and the methodology and the tool, we took advantage a lot in the uh, Biomechanics Research Unit at the University of Liège and K.O. Leuven, uh, under the supervision of Professor Lisbeth Chiris. We developed a wide range of different models from tissue engineering and uh, bone tissue engineering, biomechanics, and also a little bit of chemical engineering using this. And the reason that, you know, FreeFam was quite uh, beneficial for us, for, for the things that I will show you, uh, from this slide on. The fact is, uh, it has some cer uh, certain advantages. The first one is, FreeFam gives us a lot of freedom in controlling finite element spaces. And uh, that is something that is very crucial and is usually limiting when you deal, when you work with tools like Common Soul or Abacus. And uh, it allows us also to go for, uh, you know, like a high resolution or having control on the implementation of mathematical models that we want to have. And as an open source tool, and uh, it's almost the same for all the, all the other open source tools that they use open standards and exchange formats. And as a result, you can easily create some orchestration of tools, mostly open source tools, working together to produce uh, the result that you want. So interoperability is actually highly is in a high level using open source tools. And then FreeFam has a nice integration with some uh, you know, other scientific computing tools like PETI, I will talk about it, and some really high performance uh, domain decompositions and mesh generators and really high class solvers. So all these three things uh, will give us a high degree of freedom and also a flexibility to deal with any kind of a computational modeling project. So uh, let me uh, give you a couple of examples about the different models that we implemented using FreeFem. The first one is about a biodegradation process that was actually my PhD. So we say that this kind of implants, when they are made from biodegradable materials, uh, they can dissolve upon fulfilling the mission inside the body, they can disappear and no uh, further uh, like surgery is required to remove them. And the thing is the biodegradation behavior can be, uh, should be optimized based on uh, different types of applications, whether it's cardiovascular or orthopedics. And the process itself can be described by a set of reaction diffusion advection differential equation. So very similar to uh, the equations that I showed you. So I think you can see where we wanna go. So we define, we can derive these equations from the chemistry, uh, underlying chemistry, and then we can use uh, three fem and finite element to solve them, really as easy as that. And for this one, because we also want to track where the geometry, how the geometry and the surface of these uh, implant, in, implants evolve over time, we, have, we can also employ a moving, uh, like, uh, moving interface tracking method, like level set or face field, that just adds uh, another PD to solve. So that's the only thing that matters here. So another PD that we solve again using finite elements. 
this is, uh, you know, you already saw this. So this is the type of results that we have. As you can see, the release of material in, in the medium and then uh, the, uh, the blue surface depicted on the right shows the level set function that evolves. And uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, really like a model comprising of around six, seven partial differential equations describing how the, the concentration of components uh, change over time in different nodes of the computational element uh, of the computational domain and then the visualization would be like this. This is another example for a porous scaffold. As you can see, we, we were also able to model the side corrosion products on the surface of this implant depicted in the on the left. And then uh, these are uh, the, 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 the models that we use for validating uh, for validation and verification. You can see again a very narrow cuboid uh, degrading and releasing material to the surrounding. And then on top of that, we developed a model. So it's, it's quite uh, straightforward to link the under, underlying prefem codes and models with some high level software tools like, uh, you know, plus plot and QT. And in this case, that's what we did. The feature is a cross-platform interface that uh, can control the freeform backend. Kind of, we can uh, look at it as a front and backend uh, program. It includes also pre-processing and post-processing for sure. So we say that it has a freeform backend and C++ front end, and then uh, we had like a full feature program. So this kind of uh, communication is also quite a straightforward and possible. And this tool is available as an open source software on GitHub. And using the same models, you know, these are all implemented in FreeFAM. We implemented, we coupled this biodegradation model with some topology optimization model, still again implemented in FreeFAM in order to see the effect of biodegradation on the, the shape that we want to optimize. So what you saw there is actually like problem like this, that we have two holes inside the material block. One is fixed, one has an applied load. And then depending on the kind of constraint that we have, we can have this kind of, uh, you know, evolution in the shape that uh, gives us the most optimized shape uh, that we desire. And, you know, later on, I will describe uh, these kind of uh, things that we see here. Uh, like, uh, as you can see, we have some uh, very small uh, element, like uh, boundaries there, super, like narrow white uh, regions. And those are for um, parallelization. So I will describe it later on. And there's already simulation results, as you can see, the gradation, releasing material inside these infield objects. The next uh, project that I want to show you is a computational modeling of tissue regeneration. So the one that I showed you that we seed cells on a, a surface of the scaffolds and then they grow. So we want to model cell growth on porous, uh, open porous scaffolds. And the goal is to investigate the effect of a poor size, sharp, shape, hair return, this kind of thing uh, that we characterize as geometrical character characteristics. And for that, we had a computational model of the tissue regeneration process that is curvature driven uh, tissue growth, actually. And we had two sets of different models using level set and phase field. So these are just different differential equations so that try to correlate the curvature to the growth of the neo tissue, let's say. So this is uh, the, the stimulation output inside a bioreactor. The effect of the fluid flow is considered as well. So in an extra term in the PDE, FreeFM doesn't care about that. So if you have it inside the mathematical model and you derive the weak form, it's already there inside the model. As you can see here, we can also investigate the, uh, the effect of the geometry on uh, the rate of the tissue growth on the different type of uh, scaffolds. And as I say, I will discuss uh, parallel uh, implementation later, but this is uh, you know, the way that we decompose the mesh as depicted on the left into different subpartitions. 
and then we have, uh, as a result, we will have faster simulation. So as you can see, it grows uh, faster in regions with higher uh, character. The next project is a computational modeling of pancreatic cell viability. So that is uh, for you know addressing some issues that we have in islet transplantation uh, to treat diabetes. And this kind of transplantation, when they are grouped into like the cells are grouped into islets, they are really vulnerable because of uh, you know lack of oxygen and uh, like supply of oxygen, and as a result. They are usually put inside some devices that you provide oxygen from the surrounding, from the boundaries of the well, using a gradient-driven oxygen supply, let's say. And then we wanted to model this using a set of, um, actually it was a single reaction diffusion equation to assess, to investigate if the cells can uh, survive or not, or they will die depending on different uh, type of conditions that we can have. So in this case, uh, the cells, the group of cells, the islet are in the center that they start to consume oxygen. What you see here is the concentration of oxygen normalized. And then on the surrounding of this well, of this curve geometry, we will have oxygen being supplied. So then the, we, we, we had like different setups also for optimizing the number of islets that we can have, their size, the size of the islet. And also when we put them all together, this model allowed us to investigate uh, the optimal kind of setup that we can have for the, for the wells and a device that provides oxygen. So the equation that describes this, I showed you in the, like the, in the beginning when I wanted to show you the diffusion reaction equation for cell viability and consumption of oxygen. And then the next project is uh, related to computational modeling of bone fracture healing. That is actually the PhD project of Laura, uh, the chair of the session, in which we have like bone fracture healing in different, like we want to investigate and that in different stages. And this process can be nicely described. The biology behind can be nicely described by the set of, uh, in this case, they are called taxis diffusion reaction equation. So very similar to diffusion reaction and convection. Uh, for the way that the, the cells by chemical factors and general tissues, new tissues interact with each other. So again, we have set of PDEs that can be also coupled with a cellular automata model. So these kind of things are also possible to implement in FreeFem that uh, can be coupled, let's say. So this is uh, what uh, she has done inside FreeFem. So this is really like a type of um, output that we can have here like for different uh, biochemical factors, as I said, cells or the, the growth of the bone and the bone remodeled depending on different geometries, different like in vivo setups that uh, the experimentalists uh, in our group have. So as you can see, we have also the, the vascularization model inside uh, FreeFem using a cellular automata. And this is actually a visualization shows that, as I said, it's kind of really like a narrow uh, white lines. They are for domain decomposition. And here it shows that uh, the vascularization can also go from one domain to the other one. This is quite important because each uh, sub partition runs in, inside one CPU core. And as a result, it's really essential to have some communication here. Now, I will elaborate on that uh, shortly. So uh, yeah, the next uh, topic that was actually one of the headlines uh, is high performance computing. And uh, by that, I mean that we wanna parallelize the simulations. We wanna run simulations uh, using parallel machines on multi-core systems, or what we wanna have like, uh, uh, you know, run the simulations on supercomputers. So there are a bunch of techniques that we can use inside FreeFam and generally like scientific computing to parallelize simulations. And one of them is distributing the mesh uh, into uh, like available resources. 
And that is a technique called mesh decomposition. And for that, as I said, there are some available techniques in FreeFam. One of them is called overlapping Schwartz method. And uh, as you can see in the figure, it is like we have a mesh and then we decompose it into subpartitions. And then we assign each subpartition to one CPU core or CPU node, or uh, you know, generally speaking, it's one node. So uh, this is the way that we can uh, divide the problem into smaller pieces and run it faster. Uh, and all the examples that you saw in the previous slides that we had, like the mesh being decomposed, it was actually this technique. And then another thing that is very important in this kind of high performance computing uh, techniques is solving the linear equations that is derived. You know, I showed you before that FreeFam uh, can perform the numerical integration in order to get this linear system. And then after having this, we can have different techniques to run the system faster on a parallel machine. One of the techniques is called preconditioning the system in which we uh, multiply a matrix into both sides of the equations is called the preconditioner. Depending on the type of uh, physics that we want to model, preconditioner can be different. And then another thing is like, depending on the type of preconditioner we use, we can use also a type of solver that can be direct or iterative. You know, these are really like, uh, there are a lot of details here that, can, that are easily accessible online in documentations or also in the free frame documentation. And the thing is, the nice aspect of FreeFem is that it has a very, um, like, nicely integration, nice integration with PETSI, which is a framework for doing high performance uh, scientific computing for a wide range of different applications. And, you know, this is another advantage of FreeFem that you can easily work with PETSI and learn PETSI uh, while, you know, dealing with PETSI directly can be a little bit more difficult. And then what is uh, really essential is uh, like when you apply this kind of techniques, you need to benchmark if the parallelization is efficient or not. If it is really working uh, when you increase the number of CPU cores and uh, apply and you provide more computational resources. There are different also methodologies and uh, techniques here to benchmark the parallelization. One is called weak scaling in which we double the problem size and double the resources. So as you can see here, when we double both, we assume, we, we expect to have like the same amount of time, same amount of execution time that the simulation takes to run. So this is a visualization of that. Imagine that we have a problem size depicted on top. It is for multi-material domain. So the blue and uh, red are just two different material. And then we up, uh, go for two cores, in a you know, simulation, then we multiply or double the problem size and we double the resources. On the bottom, we have the number of subdomains. So with two cores, sub, two subdomains, and then four cores, four subdomains. Again, we double the problem size and eight with uh, you know, even double. So in this case, you know, these are not the numbers that we usually deal with, but this is the constant. And then there is another one that's called strong scaling that we keep the problem size constant and we just double the resources. So we, uh, we expect that we, when we provide more resources, and for example, we double the resources, we have like, we can have uh, like uh, reduction, drum, uh, like uh, it's a great reduction in the computational uh, time. So this is really like the type of output of this strong and weak scaling, as you can see on the, uh, on the right, that's actually an ideal case that we have a constant wall time, and wall time is a terminology that we use, for example, for number of seconds that it takes for one time step to solve. So as you can see, in this case, it's more or less something being around 28 seconds. As we double the num uh, like double the problem size or increase the problem size proportionally to the number of cores. And then in strong scaling on the left, you can see we decrease, increase the number of cores and then we have a drop in the wall time. In this case, that's not an ideal case, but uh, this is more or less like the, the behavior. So if I want to show you one uh, case study that uh, uses these kind of techniques is uh, again back to the biodegradation simulation for patient specific case. And here we have like uh, the heap implant, the cup of the heap implant that is infilled with a triple periodic minimal surfaces lattice structure. 
that we want to have actually that part to be degradable. And what am I, uh, so that, uh, what you see here on the right is actually the output of uh, topology optimization um, uh, like model that we have the desired stiffness and then it is mapped to some volume fraction and a volume fraction to TPMS structure. So in reality, this is not a part that is degradable, but uh, here for simplicity, for like simplification of the geometry, we assume that this is the part that is degradable. So as you can see that the, the model has a lot of geometrical uh, details and it, this doesn't have necessarily symmetry. So we cannot say that we have, we just investigate only portion of that. So we embed in order to perform the degradation, we embed this, uh, this cup inside a container. And uh, there we refine a mesh on the surface. And these are all the things that we, we perform inside FreeFM. So, uh, Freeform has these features, as I said, nice integration with some uh, meshing tools and uh, uh, mesh refinement, me mesh partitioning, all these geometry pre-processing tools. We were able to do these things also inside Freeform. So we embedded inside a, uh, a mesh, and as a result, the mesh would uh, the mesh contains around uh, 45 million elements. So this is a visualization of the mesh, why such a mesh contains this number of uh, elements. You can see the mesh is refined on the interface and then, um, yeah, the, as a result, we, will, we have the geometry embedded inside the container. So this is the computational mesh. And as I said, we have to derive a set of differential equations and we wanna solve them on, on this domain. So the next step is uh, like mesh decomposition using uh, you know, HPDDM library and also PEPC. In this case, what you see here is the mesh being decomposed and distributed to around 2000 CPU cores. But the way that we did it was also you know, even more for having uh, more valid strong scaling uh, kind of uh, uh, benchmark. And then this is a visualization using 128 CPU cores uh, that shows how the, the structure degrades uh, inside the container. And then depending on the different conditions, we can have like a different geometry or different diffusion, different corrosion regime or different environments and all these things in applied to this simulation. This is another uh, visualization on, uh, on top of that. So uh, you can see from a different angle how it degrades. So these are, uh, you know, uh, the type of uh, strong scaling test that can be also decomposed, can be divided into different, uh, let's say, uh, equations so as i said we have like five to seven equations and then we can measure the wall time for each equation and in the end cumulatively as can be seen on the right uh, bottom right so this are this is really like the, the type of uh, like uh, modeling work when it comes to high performance computing this is what you need to do you uh, you actually decompose the mesh you solve the equations in different uh, subpartitions, you assemble them, and at the same time, you also benchmark the, the simulations. So uh, at the end of the presentation, I want to say, as, uh, although uh, Kiara mentioned that in the beginning of the presentation, that uh, in order to find more information on FreeFem, uh, uh, there is a, a project I initiated called Tox Riders that talks about uh, you know, the, this, this methodologies both from the mathematical and also the computational side in a simplified language. So that was actually the goal uh, to represent these things in a way that it, uh, it can uh, reach a broader group of users. And uh, part of it is also demonstrating the, the power of open source when it comes to scientific computing, as I mentioned, for open standards and the high flexibility that it provides. So um, you can check it out if you're interested in these topics and you want to also learn the mathematical concept that you need to work with these tools. And uh, most of the modeling works here are based on FreeFem. So FreeFem has a very important role in, this, uh, in the content here. But uh, in addition to, you know, like uh, 
talking about uh, prefab in different projects and different uh, models, there is also a dedicated uh, uh, playlist there on, on prefab that is uh, related to um, like prefab from the very basics, so the language syntax to like uh, up to like parallelization and high performance computing and also uh, you know uh, pet c stuff and solvers so this is actually a playlist that you can check out you know um, as i said i didn't go to the details of these uh, uh like the implementation the models generally but uh, you can refer to this uh, content if you want to learn more about this thing. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for your attention. This is uh, this was uh, the, uh, the the introduction that I wanted to have to FreeFM. I hope you find it uh, useful and interesting. Okay, thank you very much, Nosava, um, for your very nice presentation. I see we don't have uh, any questions yet, but of course you're just really so. Um, well, I think there is a short question. Yeah, there is a short question. Okay. Um, let me see. Yes. Okay, so I will read it. Can you see the question yourself in the chat or do you want me to read it? Uh, no, actually, I, I think I cannot. Okay, then oh, I read for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so the first question is, it was mentioned that finding difference method is not suitable for complex geometries. Does porosity in materials lead to difficulty in finding difference implementation? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, the thing is, uh, no, uh, it's not really different, difficult to implement like material properties in finite difference. The finite difference is usually used for you know transport phenomena in like solid mechanics or generally like heat and mass transfer these kind of systems and also for acoustics when it comes to like uh, hyperbolic equations but in solid mechanics that is not very common to use uh, finite difference part of it is related to you know, formulating contact problems and these kind of things when it comes to finite difference but generally material properties are not difficult to implement in finite difference as well. So that is uh, totally okay, I would say. But uh, yeah, the main advantage of finite uh, elements is the easy, uh, easier uh, kind of uh, built-in features, mathematical features to deal with complex geometry. There is a second question, but that one I can answer it myself. Um, the question is if this is recorded to see it later. Uh, the answer is yes. This uh, has been all recorded. This is still being recorded and it will be posted in our YouTube channel and announced in our social media. So no worries about that. Um, we have a following up question. So the question from before was from uh, excuses from my, from my pronunciation from Mukun uh, Estribastava. And there is a follow up questions, I think. Yeah. Or a new question, it's a new question, but it's from the same person, so thank you. Uh, you mentioned about freedom in controlling finite element spaces in FreeFem. Yeah. Can you please expand over it by comparing it with ANSYS or Abacus? So, you know, I, I, that was actually a term that I used in a, a presentation, finite element spaces, and it refers to, you know, a little bit of the mathematics that I showed here so a finite element of space is here is referring to kind of uh, space that those equations those uh, variables u and v that i showed they belong to the finite element of spaces and it's different from you know kind of it, it is not the space that we have in domains we say computation domain it has a space and time that is not that so when I say flexibility in computing, like controlling finite element spaces, I mean that for different types of, uh, you know, interpolation and also approximation of differential equations, we need certain types of finite element spaces. For example, they can be Lagrangian, they can be like first order, second order, and then in these kind of, uh, you know, uh, programs like FreeFAM, you have really flexibility to deal with different types of uh, spaces. 
still in Abacus and ANSYS, you have this terminology, but then there, I think they are called uh, like element prime. That you say like the element is linear, element is second order, element is nonlinear. Then uh, that's the terminology that is used in those softwares. And as a result, you're really limited to the type of elements that are already provided. And then in a lot of cases, when you wanna deal with uh, like differential equations, you don't have uh, really like the necessary freedom in order to solve them inside Abacus, Comsor, or ANSYS. That's uh, actually, you know, the shortest uh, answer I could have to this question. But yeah, in order to elaborate on this, we really need to go through the, the mathematics at what finite element space means, actually. Okay. Um, well, the, the person who was asking say thanks. <laughs> um, and there is a new question from uh, uh, Pier Paolo Fucile. Uh, he, uh, well, he or she says, uh, I usually have a lot of difficulty with complex geometries mess in traditional finite element analysis software. Uh, okay. The meshing is very slow and sometimes fails. Is Riffin working better? And in terms of mechanical simulation, uh, is it powerful as with the other applications you saw us? So um, I start first with the second part. Uh, with the mechanical applications and in this case I think uh, they mean uh, like solid mechanics again so when it comes to solid mechanics you know you really need freeform doesn't have any model and that was really like the thing that I was trying to demonstrate in this presentation that you need to start with the equation that you derive yourself so when it comes to solid mechanics whether it is like an elastic problem you want to model elasticity or plasticity different type of really like hyper elasticity different material types, you really need to know the conservative form the, uh, of, the, of the equation. So when it is elasticity, it has a partial differential equation. When it comes to plasticity, that's another type. And, uh, you know, in order to work with, uh, with free frame, you really need to know that, uh, that equation. So that is really like a must that you, you need to know. And then if you know it, for the type of uh, mechanical problem you are dealing with, then freeform can be an option, and all the benefits that we talked about are already there. And about the first part of the question that was related to meshing, I say that uh, you know I, I I cannot say that actually uh, or promise that freeform can act better than any other commercial meshing tool. But the thing is, these open source uh, engines or mesh generators like MMG, Seagal or TETGEN that Freeform has a nice integration with, they are quite efficient, especially when it comes to parallel computing, parallel mesh generation or refinement. Still the same kind of flexibility that you want when you deal with these meshes, because then you can combine finite elements and meshing at the same time. And it gives you even a uh, you know, kind of automation in free and like mesh generation. I would say that, yeah, in a lot of cases, Freeform can also tackle the meshing problems that you have. And this is, you know, the experiences and the experience we have uh, dealing with some meshing problem and then uh, doing the same thing in uh, Freeform. And in this case, you should keep in mind that it is not Freeform doing that, but the libraries behind the scene. So in this case, it can be MMG or TETGEN or NETGEN. And then, uh, yeah, I would say that this uh, Freeform. Uh, sorry, these open source uh, mesh generators, they can be quite promising. So you can at least give it a try and uh, see if it can be beneficial for your problem or not, because you don't necessarily need to solve your problem inside Freeform if you use it for mesh generation. You can generate the mesh or perform the geometry pre-processing inside Freeform and then save the mesh and use it in Abacus, Ansys, or any other mechanical uh, suit, uh, software that you want to use. We have some more questions. Yeah, sure. The next question is, uh, what are the challenges of using Freefem over other commercial finite element software? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I described it quite briefly in the uh, presentation, the main challenge is just learning a little bit of the mathematics behind. And the mathematics here is just you need to learn how to convert a PDE, a 
differential equation into a big form. That's where we perform some integration, we multiply that by an arbitrary function, and those kind of things. That's the only challenge. So you need to know first the, the equation that describes the physics or chemistry or biology or anything, uh, the differential equation that describes the physics, or uh, I would say the science behind, and then you need to know how to convert that into a wave form. And then for the rest, that is a very, very simple uh, syntax that is very similar to C++, you can implement it inside FreeFM, and then the rest is uh, quite easy. But uh, you know, as I mentioned in the end, you can refer to the videos on Talks Writers, and there you can see a bunch of examples, also really basic steps that you can follow to learn FreeFM. And then you can uh, judge yourself how challenging it is in comparison to other tools. So the next question is from uh, Alessandra Aldieri. And the question is uh, regarding the biodegradation of the, of the screw example, I suppose the material is magnesium. What about polymeric composites? Can we assign material property of two or three different types uh, of polymers? Uh, that's a good question, uh, but it is, uh, yeah. Uh, it's actually, again, you know, uh, for answering that, I should emphasize again on a fact that you can model anything as long as you have the equation describing it. So if you can describe the multi-material degradation in composite polymers as a differential equation, then you can easily do that in free -time. And if not, then there is no way actually to do it because you need the big form to start with it. But if you refer, if I want to answer that based on uh, the work that we did on biodegradation, I would say that it is possible, but uh, there is a fundamental difference between degradation of polymers and metals, because metals degrade from the surface. So we have like what you saw there, that it starts to degrade, uh, the, the surface shrinks, but polymers, they have volume, uh, uh, like um, volume degradation. So they degrade uh, volume from the volume, so from the inside also, not necessarily from the interface. So the mathematics uh, that you use to describe them is very different. We have one more question or uh, uh, coming from Mukun. Uh, thank you for all, all your questions. And actually I find this one also interesting because it's something that we, uh, most of our face, I mean, most of my face. <laughs> uh, the question is, um, often nonlinear finite element simulation on Abacus face convergent issues. One reason of convergent problem could be numerical integral. Since we can better control numerical integration in FreeFem, can we assume that FreeFem leads to less convergence issues? That's a very, very good question. And as Laura said, we face it a lot. And uh, uh, you know the, the the answer actually lies in the question itself, I would say, because as you mentioned, Freefem has flexibility in dealing with finite element spaces, and there is no nonlinear solver there. You really need to deal with nonlinearity yourself based on the different type of methods available. And as a result, I would say when it comes to dealing with issues, yeah, in the first place, it can be more difficult, you know, to get started with. So when you work with a non-linear, like uh, high deformation mechanics in Abacus, that's really easy to set up. But as you said, you can face severe problems. And FreeFem, when you face a problem, because you have like all the mathematics methodology and also freedom that it comes to finite element spaces is or, are already there. I would say, you know, my personal uh, like uh, opinion on this is that, yeah, it is easier to deal with because of Again, as I said, part of the question says flexibility. If I am allowed here to also add something um, yes. <laughs> regarding that, because I do think it's a very interesting question. Yes. Um, apart from the flexibility that we have to integrate the, the equations, uh, you are also you have also flexibility to to control, for example, your time step. Because when, when we were facing this problem for my own project, um, the problem was actually the time step. And of course, you don't want, uh, you don't need necessarily the same time step to solve all the equations to all, to the whole assimilated time. So one very positive uh, aspect of freedom is that you can set 
um, some, uh, some constraints, some sort of conditions with uh, simply if statements to control your time step. And that will also solve your convergence issues. Like for example, if you have only uh, a short period of time with, uh, I don't know, boundary conditions and that is causing uh, convergence issues, you put there uh, a smaller time step and that will solve the problem. So in that regard, it's really flexible. Yeah, that's very true. You know, in FreeFM, you have control on on anything, including the time step. So, for example, implementing an adaptive time step, as Laura said, is very easy there because that's really like uh, you, have, you are actually creating the program yourself. And it is very different from creating code for final settlement from scratch because FreeFM provides everything you need for you. And then for the rest, you have control on, on the details. Okay, um, there is no other question, and I think it was a very nice uh, discussion. I maybe use, I know we are already on time, but I use a very short one from my side, but actually simply to say like, if someone who wants to start now using FreeFan, I know it's a first step, we can um, direct them to your to your videos in Tux Writers, but do they also have the support of a community? Like for example, when you use MATLAB, it's quite often you encounter a problem, so you just go to Google, add your question, and probably find something. What about Twitter? What do we need to do? That's a very good question, and it just reminds me that uh, that could have been a slide in the end that I forgot to add. That there is a very nice community around FreeFam of the developers and also the users. And that's really like in the website, you can find it. It is community.freefam.org. And uh, yeah, that's uh, something that you can uh, find, actually a lot, like um, uh, find the answers of a lot of questions you may have, you can search through it. And if you cannot, you can post your uh, question there. And they are quite agile because uh, the developers are quite responsive. And there are also really active users there uh, that um, will answer your question. And this is really like a nature of a lot of open source uh, tools. Uh, that there is a nice community around them of the users that they, if you start working with FreeFM, you will also be part of the community that you may find yourself after a couple of months, you are actually the ones that answer the questions there. So this is really like the nature of this type of tool. Okay, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Monseva, for your answers, for your talk. Thank you everyone for your for your very nice questions. It was really great to hear that we had so many questions. Um, before we close this session, I will like to ask all of you one more question. Um, if you have any suggestion about the following webinar, there is a topic that you would like to, to see a webinar about, that can be about hard skills or soft skills, please let us know. You can do that in, I mean, in the social media or via email or even here you want, um, but if there is something, any idea or suggestion that you have, uh, we are happy to take them and organize something that can be of interest for you. So yeah, I think that was an all from our side today. Again, thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you very yeah, thank much. You. Thank you, Mostaba. was great. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Bye. Bye.